YouTube is a great place to watch all kinds of content, from reaction videos, cooking tutorials, sports-related content, and just about everything in between. But sometimes, YouTubers become involved in some strange mysteries, some of which are later found to be completely trivial, while others are more sinister and remain unsolved to this day. YouTuber Isa Twema, better known to his followers as Twames, was not only becoming well-known among the YouTube community, but was also making serious headway on Instagram and Vine, where he amassed millions of followers. In just two years, his YouTube channel had grown exponentially, with more than two million people subscribing to his content, including singing quirky parody songs and recording humorous videos. In fact, he had achieved such success that he scarcely had a moment to himself, as fans would often follow him wherever he went, even showing up at his house and, on a few occasions, phoning his parents to ask questions about his life. By 2015, when he was 19 years old, Twames decided that he would pursue his YouTube career full-time, and in order to do so, he quit school. The following year, he undertook a 22-city tour, during which he performed the songs that his subscribers had come to know so well. He spent time with his fans and, as a result, was making a lot of money. But as is the case with many YouTubers, he soon started feeling stressed with the constant pressure of creating videos, and he would later state that he started feeling as though he was losing himself, and that he no longer felt as though he was being genuine on camera, but rather presenting a facade. He found that this started to create doubt in his mind over who he really was, and before he knew it, he became insecure and felt that his self-confidence had taken a serious hit. This was the very opposite of the character that he had created, and a few people knew that he was actually struggling with depression and a history of being bullied. Then, one day, Twames suddenly disappeared, and his channel went eerily quiet with no video uploads whatsoever. What caused his fans and followers even more concern was the fact that both his Instagram and his Twitter accounts had been deactivated, and rumors started to swirl as to what had happened to him. Some of his followers became convinced that he had passed away, resulting in thousands of messages from concerning fans asking if he was okay. For months after his sudden disappearance, viewers left comments on his YouTube videos, asking for clarity, but for the following year, there were no replies and no updates. His followers would later learn that despite his quirky, outgoing, and over-the-top performances on YouTube, Twames was actually a very shy and reserved person in real life, and he would later admit that he was ill-prepared for the negativity and drama that goes hand-in-hand -hand with being a YouTube star. He also pointed out that people who follow YouTubers closely often forget that they only see a small slice of that person's life, and that there are always other issues to deal with when the cameras aren't rolling, which only adds to the pressures that they're already experiencing. Twames would return to YouTube in August of 2017, but he decided to change the channel so that it would reflect his more genuine personality, though he still performed parody songs and pulled off pranks on unsuspecting victims. He also gave advice to aspiring YouTubers, reiterated that they needed to prepare themselves for the amount of negativity that they would experience, and that they would be better served by spreading positivity and joy on the platform, since this would attract a more forgiving audience. Sometimes, the pressures of being a YouTube celebrity can take their toll as content creators need to keep producing videos on a regular basis, in order to garner enough views and hence get paid. These pressures have been the downfall of many a social media star, and in some cases they never return to the platform of their choice, and choose instead to live a normal life out of the spotlight. This is seemingly what happened to Asana O'Neill, an 18-year-old model who gained a substantial following on Instagram, Tumblr, Snapchat, and YouTube, with her videos that advocated for veganism and healthy living. At the peak of her success, Asana had over 600,000 followers on Instagram, and although her YouTube channel wasn't quite as popular as her other social media accounts, she still managed to gain hundreds of thousands of subscribers, netting her upwards of $2,000 per month from that platform alone. She was also receiving free clothing from different fashion brands and sponsorships, leading her viewers to believe that she was living an idyllic life for an 18-year-old, and that her online future was looking very bright. But in 2015, everything changed for Asena, when, according to some of her posts, she no longer felt that she was living in the real world, and the longer she stayed online, the worse she felt. 
This resulted in Asana making the decision to delete all of her social media accounts, which meant deleting over 2,000 photos from Instagram alone. The photos that were left on her account had their captions altered to reveal the truth behind them. Some of these photos were fake promotional images, while others took hours and hundreds of shots to get just right. Some of her selfies had been edited with multiple apps and filters, and on some occasions, she would end up taking an array of selfies just to have something to upload. She started to realize that she put too much value on what other people, most of whom she never met, thought of her, and she knew that she had to make a change before the stress took its toll. And so, she removed much of herself from the internet before posting a video to YouTube in which she explained why she made the decisions she did and that she would not be returning for some time. But not everyone was supportive of her decisions. Some fellow YouTubers and social media influencers accused Asena of intentionally creating drama so that she could gain more followers. As unsupportive and far-fetched as this may seem, it made sense as she gained a further 400,000 followers on Instagram before her account was finally deleted resulting in even more people believing it was all a hoax. She also faced severe backlash from influencers who theorized that she'd become disillusioned by Los Angeles after her relationship with her boyfriend ended and that she only started speaking out about the pressure of being a social media star because she no longer had the drive to keep creating content. Many of Asana's followers were left in the dark as they were unaware of the YouTube video that she had uploaded and they started worrying that something untoward may have happened to her. Whatever the case may be, Asana vanished from all of her platforms and started focusing on her personal life rather than the fake one that she had created. She then created a website called Let's Be Game Changers on which she spoke about the dangers of using social media the wrong way and she continues to spread as much positivity to her followers as possible. Kevin Wu, better known to his YouTube followers as Kev Jumba, had humbling beginnings in his online career, as his first ever YouTube video was of him breakdancing in his backyard, and not surprisingly, it didn't receive many views. But with time, he started understanding the platform a little better, and his content started to gain a bigger audience. As soon as he started seeing success on his channel, he decided to quit school and he started uploading comedic content that fared much better than his dancing. As he started gaining more recognition on the platform, he would start receiving sponsorships from companies such as JCPenney and T-Mobile, and he started working with other famous YouTubers such as Jessica Lee Rose, Ryan Higa, and Philip DeFranco. Kevin would eventually feature his father in some of his videos, and before long, they were asked to participate in the popular reality TV series, The Fantastic Race. He also landed roles in feature films, including Hangman, Up Man, and Revenge of the Dragon. At this point, Kevin had over 2.6 million subscribers and more than 323 million views on his channel, and it seemed as though he had a firm understanding of how to be a successful YouTuber. But then, in 2013, Kevin suddenly stopped uploading to his channel, causing great concern among his fans, some of whom were well-known Hollywood celebrities, including Jessica Alba and Ella Noon. Speculation almost immediately ran rife, with some of his subscribers pointing to the fact that he had jokingly referred to being in a cult in the past, and some people speculated that he'd now either been taken by the cult or decided to step away from social media to concentrate on his beliefs. Others believe that he decided to start studying Buddhism and that he was in the process of becoming a monk, or that he had left YouTube after finding success in Hollywood and was now focusing all of his energy on becoming a successful actor. There were also rumors that he was working at a school in Africa that he had built and that he had decided to become a full-time teacher, or that he had simply had enough of the internet fame and decided to live a quiet and normal life instead, focusing on completing his college studies. For years, there was no word from Kevin, and some of his followers became convinced that he'd passed away. And they were right to be concerned, as Kevin did almost lose his life. He would later reveal that he had been hit by a car and had to be hospitalized for 45 days as a result. When he was released from the hospital, his father decided to move him to Houston so that he could care for him until he made a full recovery. Kevin would eventually set the record straight, explaining that he hadn't been in a cult, but that he had indeed been studying Buddhism, since he had a lot of respect for Buddhist monks and their way of life. He would eventually return to the channel, but changed its name from Kev Jumba to Kev, 
and he since stated that he would continue his journey of becoming a successful actor. He didn't reveal any specific details about the accident or the injuries that he suffered, but stated that it was thanks to his father that he made a full recovery. And so, the mystery behind Kevin Wu's disappearance had been solved, much to the relief of his millions of followers. Youssef, the owner of the FusiTube YouTube channel, found success on the platform by mostly uploading prank videos. And by 2017, he'd seemingly perfected the art as he reached over 10 million subscribers. But Fusi didn't merely find success through prank videos, as he had initially uploaded skits that detailed his childhood that he spent in the Middle East. But as soon as he switched to this more popular type of content, his channel quickly skyrocketed, with some of his videos reaching over 100 million views. Despite already being popular on YouTube, Fusi also uploaded many blogs in which he spoke about the importance of remaining positive in life, and he spread as many motivational messages as he could. Not only was he seeing amazing numbers on his channel, but he was also making a lot of money from his videos. And on some occasions, he would upload videos in which he displayed some of the more extravagant items that he'd purchased. He would also take aim at drama channels like Drama Alert and Scares, since he felt that these channels were easily duped into covering content that had either been faked or wasn't really seen as dramatic. To bring his point home, he collaborated with another YouTuber called Ricegum, and together they pretended to start a heated exchange with each other online. Millions of people took notice, with the first of the posts being retweeted more than 500 times in the span of a few seconds. This was followed up by a video showing the two men having words outside of Ricegum's house, and to everyone's shock, it became physical with Ricegum taking a swing at Fusi and striking him in the face, causing uproar among both men's followers. He would later reveal, though, that the entire fight was choreographed and that the video was made with the sole purpose of showing how easy it was to create dramatic content, which was then swallowed up by the drama channels like the two previously mentioned. But not everyone took it as the light-hearted video it was meant to be, as they felt that Fusi had gone too far to make his point. His channel would see a further small setback when he revealed that some of the pranks on his channel had been faked. But the channel continued to thrive, and in 2017, he received a diamond play button from YouTube. Fusi then started telling his followers about an event called Hate Dies, Love Arrives, which would be held on the 15th of July, 2018 and it was attended by a healthy crowd that then had to leave the venue after someone called in a fake tip that there was an explosive device in the building. The venue was evacuated and shut down, but Fusi decided that the event should still continue in the venue's parking lot. Here, he got into a verbal altercation with a fellow YouTuber known as Keemstar, and his fans started to worry about his mental health. Fusi would appear on a podcast a few days later to explain what had happened, but this also deteriorated into a shouting match, during which he told another internet star, Sam Pepper, quote, I'm a real man and I don't need yes men on the internet to tell me who I am. Then, in August of 2018, he stopped uploading to his channel, triggering fears among his followers that he may have harmed himself or that his mental health had deteriorated to the point where he had to be hospitalized. Given the strange videos that he'd uploaded just before disappearing, Many people started asking for updates in the comments section of his videos, but they received no reply, causing even more concern for his well-being. Fusi would later reveal that he'd been taken off prescription medication that he'd been taking for years, after which he used a different medication that had an adverse effect on him. He added that he lost all of his money and personal possessions in the span of one summer and that he had no self-respect left. He stated that he was undergoing therapy, which seemed to be helping, and that he had the support of his family after being booked into a rehab facility. In September of that year, he made the decision to give his YouTube channel away, so that lesser-known content creators could use it as an exposure tool, and the mystery behind his hiatus had been solved. The Miss Hannah Minx YouTube channel, owned by its creator, Hannah Wagner, was created in 2008, just a few years after YouTube was officially launched. Hannah had a love for everything Japanese, and she dedicated her channel to the Japanese language and the beauty of the country which she wanted to share with as many people as possible. The channel quickly became popular due to the ease at which she taught Japanese and the quirky outfits that she wore in her videos, and before long she accrued as many as 600,000 subscribers. 
She introduced a segment on her channel in which she would feature a Japanese word and a phrase for each week, and her followers waited with bated breath for each video to be released, with the most popular of these gaining 10 million views. After her success on YouTube, Hannah was invited to play parts in two movies, the first of which was The Devil's Carnival, which was released in 2012, the second being a movie called Sleigh Bells. But on the 9th of August 2013, Hannah uploaded one more video to YouTube, after which she suddenly disappeared, causing much consternation and confusion among her fans. Not a word was heard from the YouTuber, resulting in the director of one of the films hiring a private investigator to find out where she was. It soon came to light that a woman of the same age as Hannah had passed away in a traffic accident, and her fans became worried that it may have been her, but it was soon revealed that it was, in fact, another woman who had lost her life. Others speculated that she'd grown tired of all the attention she was getting from her videos, and merely decided to step away from the spotlight to live a quieter life. Though there was no evidence to support this theory, what made this situation all the more strange was the fact that Hannah didn't merely leave her channel unattended, but she deleted almost every video that she'd uploaded over the years, something she'd done in the past before suddenly returning to her channel. There were even rumors that Hannah had been kidnapped, though this rumor was quickly unfounded. It would later be revealed that Hannah had entered into a dispute with her manager, and that this had such an effect on her that she merely decided to quit making YouTube videos without any warning to her subscribers. It came to light that Hannah's manager owned the rights to all of the content that she had created, and rather than enter into a legal dispute over the matter, she just decided to move on with her normal life. Some sources state that she's now married and that she and her husband have two children. She's also deactivated her Instagram and Twitter account. Allie Speed, better known as just Allie, joined YouTube years before she became a well-known YouTuber. She made her first appearance in a YouTube video in 2009 on a channel owned by her boyfriend, Charles Trippy. Soon after their relationship started, Allison also started uploading videos to her own channel, focusing on lifestyle content and personal vlogs. In 2014, Allison and Charles' marriage would come to an end, and she started uploading even more content to her channel, gaining a healthy following in the process. But rumors about the couple's divorce soon got out of hand, with some people claiming that either Allison or Charles had been unfaithful. Others speculated that one of them wanted children while the other didn't, but all of these stories were addressed and dismissed by both Allison and Charles. But soon after the split, Allison's fans were left in the dark as all of her social media accounts suddenly went quiet. Charles was still uploading content to his channel on a daily basis, documenting and showcasing his life, but he made no mention of where Allison had gone. Fans grew concerned, and soon forums were created on several websites on which fans theorized on what may have transpired. Twitter users pointed to the fact that the couple had been fighting a lot in the months leading up to the split, and that they were at loggerheads over the future together. In one podcast, someone close to the couple stated that they were constantly arguing when the camera was off, and that those close to them were certain that they would split up before they eventually did. Fans posted to various social media sites asking for an update on where Allison was, but they received no replies and were left to speculate. Since Charles had been in ill health leading up to the couple's divorce, some fans suggested that it may have taken a toll on the relationship and that Allison merely decided to go her own way. Others pleaded for the couple to get back together as they'd been following them online for years and erroneously believed that they had the perfect relationship. But as most of us know, not all is what it seems when it comes to the internet. Some fans immediately caught on to what was happening and wished Allison all the best until she felt ready to return to her online status. Allison has since returned to YouTube and continues to post videos about her daily life, but she no longer uploads daily vlogs like she used to. Following her divorce from Charles, Allison started dating an old college friend named Chase, but this relationship also came to an end a few years later after which she started dating a fellow Twitch streamer named Lauren Scott. Though there is no official explanation, it's assumed that Allison merely took a much-needed break from her online life to deal with her divorce and the after-effects that it had on her life. Though Charles has been candid about the split and his life afterward, Allison has chosen not to speak about it too much and is seemingly focusing on the path that lies ahead of her instead. 
Most YouTubers who are considered to have gone missing eventually return to the platform after a hiatus, which sometimes lasts years. But they usually provide an update on why they're no longer updating, and they're welcomed back with open arms when they do return. But the case of Nicholas Sonderegger, a YouTuber who made a few appearances on the popular YouTube channel Explore With Us, is one that's yet to be solved, as he remains missing to this day. Nick, who owned the YouTube channel Sunspeak, gained some popularity on his channel thanks to the vlogs that he uploaded, most of which featured him dancing to songs playing in the background. Nick created his channel on the 5th of October 2009, and his first video was uploaded that same day. He then created a series entitled A Dance A Day, which he kept alive until the 4th of December 2014. The last video that was uploaded to his channel was uploaded on the 5th of May 2017, and his channel has been quiet ever since, despite his disappearance only occurring the following year. Members of the Explore With Us channel learned of his disappearance when one of their subscribers notified them that he was missing, and they then got in touch with his friend Austin, who they met with Nick one day while they were in the middle of a live stream. Austin then informed them that on the 9th of September 2018, Nick and Austin were spending time together at Austin's house in Salton Sea Beach, California. At around 2.30 a.m., they were getting ready to go to bed for the night when suddenly they heard someone screaming on the other side of town, according to Austin. The two men instantly knew something was wrong, but they couldn't agree on whether they should investigate in case someone needed help. Before they could decide, though, Austin fell asleep and only woke up hours later. As soon as he did, he noticed that Nick was no longer in the house, and he went out to look for him. He would report that he found Nick's flashlight about a block from the house. When investigators arrived to aid in the search, they found that the pants that he was wearing and one of his boots, along with his sharpened blade sleeve, had been found near the water, as Austin described it. His wallet and keys were never found. Austin stated that he reported Nick as missing straight away, but the Imperial County Sheriff's Office listed Nick as last being seen on the 12th of September, which is three days after Austin claimed to have seen him last. On the 18th of September, Austin went out once again to see if he could find any trace of Nick, and this time he found his hat and shirt in an area that had already been searched underneath a few trees that were situated just a short distance from the house. In messages to the Explore With Us channel, Austin stated that whoever was responsible for Nick's disappearance could still be in the area and that he needed to be careful while searching for his friend. Austin stated outright that he believes Nick's life had been ended by someone in the area and that they left the clothes to be a possible warning. Members of the Explore With Us channel conducted their own search for any sign of Nick but were unsuccessful. They've since spoken to Austin and asked him to join in the search, but he failed to reply to their messages. They then learned from Nick's cousin that the information given by Austin was contradictory to the facts of the case. It would come to light that both of Nick's boots were found along with his wallet, which according to Austin was still missing. It's also not been made clear who found the rest of Nick's clothes during a subsequent search since Austin claims he stumbled across the items while some sources claim that Nick's brother was the one who found them. They were also told that someone found an imprint of Nick's body on the ground where some of the items were found, but it's not been made clear what exactly this implies. Strangely, there's very little information on Nick's mysterious case, and Austin has since stopped communicating with the Explore With Us channel. Austin is described as having black hair and brown eyes, weighing 185 pounds and standing 5 foot 10 inches tall. If you have any information on his case, you're urged to contact the Imperial County Sheriff's Office at 442-265-2021. Most YouTubers create content that's either funny, uplifting, or in some way entertaining. But there are some content creators that use the platform for more nefarious reasons. And by all accounts, Rashad Jamal, whose legal last name is actually white, falls into the latter category, as he's a self-proclaimed New Age prophet. Jamal has gained over 84,000 followers on Instagram, 176,000 on TikTok, and more than 50,000 subscribers to his YouTube channel. In his videos, Jamal preaches strange beliefs and claims to have been brought to Earth to heal the planet of the damage that's been done by humans. He's accused certain athletes, most notably NBA players, of being synthetically made robots, 
and that the governments of the world are able to manipulate the weather in whichever way they see fit. Jamal also has a checkered past with the law, as he's been accused of serious crimes that he committed before fleeing to an off-the-grid community, which was found living in tents in the woods. Some of his followers have also had brushes with the law, and many people have described his online community as an out-and-out -out cult. In January of 2024, though, the group fell into media spotlight once again, when six of the members simply disappeared without a trace. In a report given by the Berkeley Police Department, which also considers the group to be a cult, they stated that they found Jamal's followers living in a house in St. Louis, owned by 25-year-old woman Michaela Wickerson. Wickerson is one of the missing members, and her mother has stated that she contacted authorities months before she disappeared, but received no help. She also added that her daughter was manipulated by Jamal and the rest of the group, resulting in her cutting all ties with her family, quitting her job, and taking all of her money from her credit cards, likely to fund Jamal's operation. Witnesses who lived next door to the house reported seeing Jamal's followers worshipping the sun outside on the house's lawn every day. They also saw them digging in the front yard for reasons unknown, and added that they often saw them running around with no clothes on when it started raining. Investigators have searched the home where the cult was staying, but have not released any details on whether they have any clues or not. They also became aware that the cult is anti-government, and that Jamal encouraged his followers to go off the grid. If you have any information on the missing cult members, or have any information on this case at all, you're asked to contact the Berkeley Police Department at 314-524-3311. In December of 2023, 32-year-old Carlos Candreva was a successful Brazilian social media influencer, as he had 18,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel, on which he discussed current affairs and relationship issues. He was also known to be a DJ programmer and a poet, and on the 30th of December 2023, he posted to his Instagram profile, stating that he was enjoying a trip on the MSC Preziosa cruise liner, which was headed to Rio de Janeiro from Sao Paulo. On board with Carlos was his girlfriend, Vittoria Momenso. But just a few hours after posting to Instagram, things would take a turn for the worst, and Carlos remained missing today after he seemingly went overboard. Vittoria told investigators that she and Carlos got into an argument when he noticed some texts on her phone from other men. She added that they had been arguing lately about whether or not the relationship was exclusive and he became jealous when he saw the texts. He also saw screenshots on her phone of conversations she had with a few of her friends, in which she stated that Carlos might be thinking of ending her life. She reiterated that she still believed this to be the case before he disappeared. Upon discovering the texts, Carlos became infuriated and stated that Vittoria was making a fool of him and that he felt like a clown. He added that he could never see Vittoria with someone else and that it would traumatize him for life. Then, according to several fellow passengers, he did the unthinkable. Without a further word, he ran to the edge of the ship and threw himself overboard, leaving Vittoria in complete shock. The alarm was immediately sounded and a search of the ship was conducted, but no sign of Carlos was found. Over the next few hours, two boats scoured the area in hopes that Carlos would be found, but to no avail. The ship was eventually cleared by the Coast Guard and it continued on its way to Rio de Janeiro. The Brazilian Navy has since taken over search efforts, but has not found any sign of Carlos to date. Vitoria understandably had to receive medical attention for shock after the incident and she left the cruise the following day to relay her version of events to investigator. Some missing person cases boggle the mind when an experienced outdoorsman suddenly vanishes while out in the wild. And the case of 32-year-old Finn Creaney follows the very same narrative. At the time of his disappearance, Finn was working as a survival teacher at a company called Wildcat Bushcraft, and he'd started a YouTube channel on which he documented some of the hikes that he undertook. In some of his other videos, he demonstrated how to build effective shelters and how to survive out in the wilderness when temperatures dropped below freezing. Finn hails from Easter Ross in the Scottish Highlands, and on the 25th of March, 2022, he decided to go for a hike to Golsby Beach from his starting point in Loch Naver. He told his family that he would be gone for two days, but that he would be back home by noon on Saturday. 
but Finn wasn't merely heading out to enjoy the outdoors. He'd planned to use footage of this hike on his YouTube channel as a finale to the second season of a series that he had created. His wife Lucy was in the process of opening a botany business, and Finn had promised her that he would help fill orders for delivery on Mother's Day when he returned home. He then drove to Gulsby Beach, where he left his car, and was then given a ride by a family member to Loch Naver, reaching his starting point at around 2.15 p.m. Lucy intended to keep in touch, but noticed that evening that Finn hadn't read any of her messages, and since he was using his phone as his only camera, she became concerned. But by Sunday evening, he still hadn't returned, and she started to think that something was wrong. The following morning, Lucy checked with Finn's workplace and was told that he never arrived for his shift. Upon hearing this, she immediately contacted the police to report her husband as missing. A search was quickly organized with the Coast Guard, searching the lock while searchers scoured Fenn's intended route with the help of helicopters. Surprisingly, they found no sign that Fenn had been in the area. There were no campsites, none of his personal possessions were found, and investigators were left dumbstruck. For the next month, volunteers and professional searchers did their utmost, but were unable to locate any sign of Fenn, and eventually the case went cold with no further development. It would later be revealed that Finn had left a voicemail on Lucy's phone immediately after reaching Goldsby Beach, where he left his car. In the message, he stated that he loved her and he was proud of her, and investigators found it strange that he never replied to Lucy's subsequent message. They also discovered that his phone had been switched off before he was meant to start his hike, since it last pinged off a tower in Lairg Village. This was concerning since Finn was very prepared for his hike, making sure that he had ample battery life on his phone, since it would also serve as his camera. When all search efforts failed to produce any results, Finn's family continued to look for him. They created posts on social media sites, printed and handed out flyers, and returned to his intended hike route multiple times, but still couldn't find a single clue that would reveal what had happened to him. A group of hikers would later report that they had seen Finn about three miles from his starting point on the day that he disappeared, and they added that he seemed to be in a good mood and that he didn't seem distressed in any way. Investigators have received several other reports of sightings of Finn, but none of these were found to be credible and didn't amount to anything of use. Finn's family has since stated that it seems as though he simply vanished into thin air, since not a single trace of him was found on his intended route. Lucy told one media outlet that it felt like he was sucked into a vortex, but stated that she would never stop looking for him. The last time that Finn was seen, he was wearing a brown leather jacket, a green poncho, and brown boots. He's described as having long brown hair and a full brown beard. He stands 5 foot 11 inches tall and has freckles on his arms and nose. If you've seen Finn or have any information on his disappearance, you're asked to dial 101 quoting case number 0912 of the 28th of March, 2022. There are certain parts of YouTube that are not for the faint of heart, as they contain videos that have caused many viewers to have sleepless nights, thanks to the inexplicable videos that can be found on certain channels. What makes these videos all the more disturbing is the fact that they contain no context, and hence it's up to the viewer to decide what they mean often resulting in a slew of conspiracy theories that are often just as terrifying. One such video was uploaded to a channel called Raider Dog in May of 2011, and many of the comments left by viewers state that it's one of the most unsettling clips that they've ever watched. The strange video starts with a woman who's standing in a house's hallway. She's wearing what looks to be a wedding dress and looks directly into the camera with a strange, menacing expression on her face. She then approaches the camera, lowering herself down to do so, before turning around and walking away. The scene then transitions to show her wearing normal clothing, and she once again approaches the camera with an unsettling walk, before once again gazing into the lens. She's then shown in a different white dress, but this time she's depicted as being pregnant, and as she gazes into the camera this time, she does something completely unexpected. She reaches under her chin and pulls a latex mask from her face, revealing that she actually looks completely different. She then fixes her hair, still with a strange expression on her face, before the scene changes once again, showing the same woman sitting at a table with a piece of cake in front of her, which she then begins to eat. 
Every time she takes a bite of the cake, she looks directly at the camera, and she repeats this process until the cake is finished. Next, the video cuts to her eating a banana from start to finish while she glances at the camera. Surprisingly, in the next scene, she once again reaches under her chin and begins to pull a second mask from her face, but the footage ends before her real face is revealed. While all of this is happening, haunting music can be heard playing in the background, making each scene more disconcerting than the last. Many people left comments asking Raider Dog to explain the video, but they only received short replies that gave no further context. It would later come to light that the video had actually been uploaded to a channel called Zaja's Room, which belongs to someone who creates latex and plastic masks. The first mask in the video is made of plastic while the second is constructed from latex. The channel owner uploaded the video to show how realistic their masks were and showed the woman eating in order to showcase how the masks would react in that situation. Once these details came to light, Commenters stated that the video seemed much less scary since they've now had some context, but no one is certain why Raider Dog decided to upload it to his gaming channel and why he refused to give any information to his followers in the comments section. Some YouTube channels are truly strange, as there's no indication of who the channel owner is, they have no information in the channel's about tab and the videos that they upload seem to serve no purpose other than leaving viewers confused. The Deeper YouTube channel contains a total of 40 videos, each one as strange if not stranger than the last. They have strange nonsensical titles such as AKT LASA or Zaza equals equals, Proxier or long strings of letters that seemingly have no meaning which is the case in the last video that was uploaded to the channel on the 17th of June 2019. This clip, which lasts just over a minute, begins with a black screen and a strange humming sound that increases in intensity as the video progresses. We then see the first visuals after about 18 seconds, but this brings no clarity to the video as it shows the floor in someone's house, distant buildings with their lights on in the night, a wooden door with a silver doorknob and not much else. In another video titled BSHLK, we can see a broken light bulb lying on the floor while a strange distorted voice can be heard speaking in the background. One Reddit user would eventually figure out that the words being spoken in the background were taken from a Daniel Johnston song entitled Poor You. The lyrics being used in the video are quote, Hi, how are you? Every morning he got up, dreading each moment he had to be awake. He'd look at the floor, scribble on gum wrappers, he'd never found a better way to joke around. The clock would tick and time would slow, there wasn't anywhere he wouldn't go, to avoid having to see anyone. He'd sit in a chair and lean against a wall, but that didn't seem to matter much at all. Visually, nothing further happens, as we're merely left with the image of the broken light bulb rolling back and forth on the floor, leaving many viewers scratching their heads in confusion and spawning many strange theories. Many viewers believe that the videos on this channel contain coded messages that, when deciphered, relate to cold missing person cases, and that the uploader somehow had a hand in these cases. What we do know is that the channel suddenly stopped uploading after five years, and shortly after the last video was added, a post appeared online in which it was revealed that the original uploader had passed away. The post does state that there's a lot more footage that was meant for the channel and that the videos might be uploaded in the future, but to date, this has not been done. The post ends by saying, please keep your eyes, hearts, and minds open. The theory that the uploader was involved in missing person cases has been all but dismissed, since it's unlikely that someone would post incriminating evidence to YouTube, and so no one is certain whether the videos are part of an art project or whether they were merely created to instill a sense of discomfort in those that watch them. Others believe that there's something more sinister to the videos, as some show images of an abandoned basement that contains chains and other unsettling items, much like scenes that are often depicted in horror movies. Whatever the case may be, it's a very strange channel that's caused a lot of speculation online, and we may never learn the true purpose behind these videos, which many people think might just be a good thing. One of the greatest mysteries in life is whether there's life after we pass away. It's a question that's vexed us for centuries, but it's also one that can never be answered by any living human. 
This was the thought process behind the creation of a video called Dining Room or There Is Nothing, which was uploaded to YouTube on the 31st of July 2010 by a channel owned by a man named David Earl. The video starts with a pale-skinned woman sitting in front of a pair of windows with her eyes closed. She's dressed in a white dress and can be seen holding a spoon in her left hand while a fire blazes outside the windows. She then suddenly opens her eyes and looks directly into the camera with an intense look on her face. All the while, melancholic piano notes can be heard playing in the background, making for a pretty spooky scene. The woman then begins to speak as the camera zooms out, but her words seem like gibberish as they make no sense. She then pitches forward, causing her face to end up in the bowl that she was eating from. The camera continues to zoom out, revealing a long table with a white tablecloth and another bowl, and Spoon sitting on the opposite end. The fire continues to blaze outside, and for a few seconds, everything remains the way that it is. But then, the camera starts to zoom in again, and the woman suddenly sits up, looking into the camera once again. She can then be heard saying, there is nothing, in a strange, almost mechanical voice, before she closes her mouth and eyes again, bringing the video to a close. Eagle-eyed viewers quickly realized that the clip is actually only half the length and that the first half is played backwards. This means that when the video is looped, there's no telling where it starts and finishes. The video caused a lot of speculation after it was uploaded, with many commenters stating that it gave them an unsettling feeling whenever they watched it. Others stated that it was an amazing art piece that was meant to evoke strong emotions, since it dealt with the topic of the afterlife. Some commenters speculated that this is a depiction of hell, given the flames that can be seen in the background, and the fact that the clip can be played forward and backward, symbolizing the endlessness of being in hell. Others believe it was merely a statement that there's no life after death, since the woman seems to lose her life, then comes back to life to state there's nothing, referring to what she saw in the afterlife. The creator of the video would reveal that he was trying to depict his paradoxical desire to prove that there is no afterlife, and that he attempted to do so by showing someone who had this proof, a woman who comes back to life. The truth behind the unsettling video has finally been revealed, but many people stated that this did little to detract from the creepiness of the visuals and the feeling of uneasiness that it instilled in them. While some viewers marveled at the message behind the video and the unique way in which it was created, many more have vowed never to watch it again, since it had a profound effect on them that left them with unanswered existential questions of their own. Some YouTube channels may not be as creepy as others, but they still contain an air of mystery, since it isn't known who the channel is owned by or who the actual creator of its videos are. This usually leads to a lot of speculation among internet sleuths who do their best to solve the mystery, and a channel called Russo is no exception. The channel was created on the 2nd of March 2018 and has since garnered over 5.1 million subscribers. The videos that are uploaded to the channel are all of Russo playing the piano. But what's captivated Russo's viewers is the fact that his videos contain lines and dots that show anyone playing along which notes he's playing, and hence they're seen by some as tutorials to playing the piano. But despite the channel having millions of subscribers and the videos gaining hundreds of thousands of views, no one knows who Russo is since he's never revealed his face to the camera, instead choosing to focus on his hands and the piano keys. This prompted many internet sleuths to do a little digging, and it would soon come to light that Russo is a classically trained pianist with over 20 years of experience. He's also hailed as the fastest artist without any previous online presence to gain more than 1 million and 2 million subscribers on YouTube, which is no small feat since this milestone was reached in just 18 months. When people started speculating about his identity on Reddit, many people stated that the songs were being played by multiple people since they believed the hands in some of the videos belonged to different people. But this simply isn't the case since we know for certain that Russo is one individual. Others marveled at his talent and were amazed at the fact that the artist isn't much better known. Others stated that they didn't see what all the fuss was about since they considered Russo's playing sloppy and inaccurate but added that this could be thanks to the type of piano that he uses. At one point, the channel stopped uploading videos, and it was suggested that this was done due to copyright issues on YouTube, or that the artist was going through some personal issues. 
One Reddit user claimed that almost a year's worth of Russo's videos had received copyright strikes and had to be removed from the platform. They added that the artist then stopped uploading since he was afraid that too many strikes would result in the channel being deleted. In 2022, Russo's channel reached an unbelievable milestone of receiving over 1 billion views. According to the website CompassMG.com, Russo is planning to start touring in the future, but no date has been provided, and it's uncertain whether this is still in the works since there's very little information available online. Whether Russo's identity will be revealed in the near future remains unknown. If he were to do so, his following is likely to grow even further, but for now, he remains a faceless artist who chooses to focus on the music rather than celebrity status. It's usually the case that when a YouTube channel starts to gain a lot of followers, it's supplemented with other social media pages such as Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, among others, since it's then exposed to a larger audience which results in more subscribers. The YouTube channel, It's a Gundam, is no exception since its creator has many followers on these sites, despite the fact that he's never revealed his true identity and remains anonymous to this day. What is known is that he was born in Tortuga, Hawaii, before later relocating to New York. He also revealed that he has two dogs, one named Fluffy and the other named Chuchi, along with a cat named Smokey. The It's a Gundam channel was created on the 19th of February 2015, and at first uploaded videos in which he reviewed anime episodes, movies, TV shows, cartoons, music, and video games. But his time on the platform has not been without controversy. On the 13th of May, 2020, he uploaded a video in which he took aim at the subscribers and followers of a Twitch streamer called Pokimane. This followed a post by one of Pokimane's followers who stated that they'd been unable to pay their rent for four months and that they had been evicted since they donated all of their money to the streamer. This prompted Pokimane to fire back by stating that the post was just a joke, but she then suggested that it's a Gundam sponsors should drop him and so a bitter feud had started. This had the opposite effect as It's a Gundam's video quickly gained over 700,000 views and eventually they were able to make peace with Pokimane after an apology video. But before this happened, one of It's a Gundam's sponsors dropped him as Pokimane had suggested, resulting in a wave of backlash from other YouTubers who felt that she was too sensitive and didn't know how to accept constructive criticism. But there are still many people who disliked It's a Gundam's demeanor in his videos as he's often criticized female content creators and in doing so alienated many would-be subscribers from his channel. He's also had feuds with other YouTubers, one of which is called Content Cop. It's a Gundam and Content Cop each created videos in which they criticized the other, which also resulted in arguments among their fans and subscribers. He was also asked to apologize after he made some insensitive comments during a live stream on his channel. He would later acknowledge that his remarks were in bad taste and he issued a full apology, but he'd once again divided opinion and in the process lost many subscribers. Despite all this, his channel still has over 770,000 subscribers who enjoy his comedic antics and reviews of popular video games and anime series. It's a Gundam is known to have strong opinions against cancel culture and he's even created a series on his channel in which he criticizes the New York Post newspaper since he believes the paper's too conservative. A visit to It's a Gundam's Instagram page also doesn't reveal anything about his identity since it contains many photos, none of which are of his face. For the time being, it's a YouTube mystery that remains unsolved and only time will tell whether we ever learn It's a Gundam's true identity. Makeup tutorial videos are some of the most popular on YouTube, with some of these content creators having millions of subscribers who tune in to learn how to apply makeup properly and professionally. One such channel is owned by a woman named Jaclyn Hill, and it's proven to be immensely popular as she currently has over 5.5 million subscribers. She often shows her viewers how to get the same makeup effect as some well-known celebrities such as the Kardashians and even offers advice on how to stop consuming alcohol. Her most popular video is entitled Smoky Cat Eye Tutorial and has received more than 16 million views since it was published in August of 2012. She's also appeared in a video with Kim Kardashian and as is to be expected, that video proved to be massively popular, gaining 11 million views in 6 years. But the channel has also seen its share of controversy. 
In 2019, she released an independent makeup line called Jacqueline. But soon after the products were made available to the public, she received a slew of complaints. People who used the products claimed that the lipstick included in her makeup line contained mold, and in some instances, hair. Following the backlash, she uploaded a video to YouTube, in which she stated that she had undertaken an investigation to find out what had gone wrong during the production of the lipstick. She made sure to state that none of her products had expired, and that the mold that people were talking about was actually oxygen bubbles that appear on the lipstick's surface when it cools down after production. But this shouldn't happen. She then stated that the hair that was found in the lipstick was transferred to the product via white gloves worn by lab workers, but added that the products are still safe to use, and that she would be using a different laboratory in the future. Some sources state that Jacqueline deleted all of her social media accounts following the backlash, and even took her brand's website down after promising to refund anyone who received an inferior product. But the biggest controversy surrounding Jacqueline came in July of 2021, when she sent out an alarming tweet that left her followers divided. The post, which was added on the 11th of July, read, quote, Two guys were literally trying to physically pull me into their car while I was alone outside. Thank you, Jesus, that I'm okay, but it was so traumatizing. Many of her followers replied with concern, asking if she was all right, and expressing their relief at the fact that she was able to get away from her would-be abductors without any physical harm. But not everyone was as accepting of her claims. Many people took to their own social media platforms to speculate whether the report was merely a publicity stunt to draw attention to her channel, with some stating that she would never have gone through that experience without phoning the police afterward. They also pointed to the fact that she'd recently released a bronzer makeup product that didn't do very well, and that her claims were likely made in an attempt to gain more customers. This theory was only fueled when Jacqueline released a new makeup collection titled Hot Tropics just three days later, causing even more speculation as to whether she was being truthful or not. When she became aware of these accusations, she took to her social media to hit back, stating, quote, The fact people are accusing me of lying about what happened to me this weekend is absolutely disgusting. You are the reason why so many people don't speak up about things that happen to them. She then explained that she hadn't gone into detail about the incident, since she was still processing exactly what had taken place, but promised to make more details available later on her Instagram account. She also felt that the criticism against her was unwarranted, and feared further backlash if she spoke about it. She added that she would never be going anywhere alone again since it was a terrifying experience, and she never wanted to have it happen again. It isn't known whether Jacqueline was being truthful about her kidnapping ordeal or not, but most of her followers seem to have decided to give her the benefit of the doubt, and continue to follow her every move on social media. Steven Syros is a treasure hunter who's been searching for a lost treasure that's rumored to have been aboard a Spanish ship when it sank. He's uploaded many YouTube videos to his channel, in which he keeps his subscribers informed on his progress. And on the 25th of October, 2019, he added a video in which he recounts the legend. He states that in 1610, King Philip of Spain ordered that three ships had to be built in Acapulco. These ships only had one purpose, to harvest pearls that could be found along the coast of Mexico. The ships would have 26 oars, making it easy to navigate through the water and in 1612, they were ready to set sail. Forty Portuguese pearl divers accompanied the crew, and soon they started hunting for pearls, a very lucrative endeavor, since pearls were more valuable than gold at the time. As the ships made their way along the coast, they would often stop to trade with the locals who'd been collecting pearls for some time. But on one occasion, things didn't go quite to plan. Upon arriving at one particular village, a deal was made that the sailors would trade a basket of clothing for a basket of pearls. But soon after the trade was completed, the chief of the village became outraged when he found that the basket of clothing had been damaged by worms, and he fired an arrow at a commanding officer, injuring him and forcing him to flee back to Acapulco. The two remaining ships continued looking for pearls, and before long they came across a beach where thousands of pearl-bearing oysters had washed up. They gathered as many as they could and set out once more. But their joy was short-lived, as one of the ships ran afoul of a coral reef, causing serious damage to the hull. The cargo from the sinking ship was then transferred to the other, and the decision was made to continue hunting for pearls rather than to return to Acapulco. 
The ship continued on its way and made its way into an estuary. Before long, the ship reached a large lake, and here the captain decided to head back home. But water levels in the lake had dropped dramatically, and the crew found that there was no way out of the lake, since the ship kept getting stuck on sandbanks under the water. They managed to keep the ship sailing for a further three days, but eventually it ran aground, and it was abandoned with any cargo that could not be carried. The crew returned to Acapulco weeks later, but the abandoned ship was never retrieved and was eventually buried by the same sands that grounded it. In November of 2019, Syro stated that he and his crew had found something in the desert where they believed the ship had been abandoned. He released a disclaimer in which he explained that he would not be showing any of the team's faces on camera since it would be a safety risk. He also wouldn't be disclosing the area that they were exploring, since they didn't want anyone finding the treasure before they did. This video was uploaded four years ago, and since then, there have been no further updates. It isn't known whether Cyrus and his team ever found the pearls they were looking for, or why he suddenly stopped posting videos to his channel. Some people have speculated that it was all a hoax, or that he merely never found anything, and decided to step away from the platform to avoid embarrassment. Whatever the case may be, it's a YouTube mystery with no answers, and it's likely we'll never learn what became of Cyrus' treasure hunt. Alex Bale is well known on YouTube for creating SpongeBob SquarePants conspiracy theory videos, but he's also the creator of an ARG called Happy Meat Farms, which tells the story of the Bynes family who start farming with animals in Orlando, Florida. The family vows to raise their animals humanely, unlike the farms owned by large corporations. But soon after, the father and mother perish in a house fire, leaving their daughter, Ramona, to run the farm. She found that the farm's humane practices were not profitable, and so she partnered with an unknown person to become one of the largest meat-producing companies in the world. She would eventually be replaced by a look-alike, and this is where the YouTube channel, This Place Is Not Happy, comes in. The channel only contains five videos, but has been spoken about at length among internet sleuths, as their creator remains unknown. One of the videos is entitled Happy Meat Farm's HR Orientation Video, and it starts with Ramona introducing herself, but she's soon interrupted by a warning that flashes onto the screen. It states that the video is the sole property of Happy Meat Farm's Inc., and it's only authorized personnel who are allowed to watch it. The viewer is then told that the company is happy to have them on their team, and that they just have one job, to feed a creature called Mother. They're given three rules to follow, which are to not touch anything, to not look at anything, and to have fun. The viewer is then given a virtual tour of the facility, after which Ramona appears again to wish the viewer well. The last video that was uploaded to the channel was added on the 17th of October, 2023, and it shows a news broadcast in which the viewer is told that a fire has broken out at Happy Meat Farms. Visuals show firefighters attempting to contain the blaze from the top of a crane, and the newsreader states that everyone in the facility succumbed in the unfortunate accident. A deep voice can then be repeatedly heard saying, Mother is dead, before a series of numbers flash onto the screen, and the video ends. The channel, which has 184,000 subscribers, has left many people baffled, since not everyone is familiar with the ARG's backstory. But it has been suggested that the fictional fire was started by Ramona as an act of revenge against the new owners of the farm. Many commenters familiar with the plot stated that they found the new developments surprising and that they looked forward to the next installment. As for the video's creator, they remain unknown and have not given any hints as to who they are or why they created just five Happy Meat Farm videos. Most YouTubers have no qualms about revealing facts relating to their personal lives, since their faces are visible to anyone who watches their videos, and in most cases, it helps them gain a larger following. But there are some YouTubers who choose to remain anonymous against all odds, and despite this, still make a success of their channels. One channel named I Am Nobody 89757 has done just that, and its creator, who's only known by their voice, has stated that they wish to remain anonymous since they don't want recognition for their real name, but rather their contribution to the platform. This has led many people to theorize that the username contains clues as to their real identity, with some people speculating that the number 89757 holds some significance. 
but this is mere speculation since they could simply have been added automatically when the channel was created. As for the videos that they create, they seem to cover a wide range of subjects including philosophy, politics, and even emerging technologies. Many people have noted that they seem to be knowledgeable in the field of law, as they regularly advise viewers who have questions about legal issues. This includes the revision of legal documents, free consultations, and referrals to other legal professionals. They've also stated that identity is not merely fixed or static, but rather a dynamic process that's formed by one's actions and interactions with others. They've also spoken out against the labeling of people, stating that the race, gender, nationality, and profession should not be factors that people are judged by, since they're often inaccurate, insensitive, oppressive, and limiting, since they keep people from discovering their true selves. Social media users first became aware of I Am Nobody 89757 when they started posting to social media sites, creating strange posts and linking to weird websites. This made people sit up and take notice, and before long, speculation ran rife as to their identity. Many of their comments and posts contain numbers 333 or 1111, along with the different shapes that many internet users believe may be clues to their real identity but these are yet to be unraveled if this is indeed the case. There have also been suggestions that the username is part of an ARG, but again, there's no evidence to prove that this is the case. According to some sources, I am nobody 89757 has received threats after exposing corruption but has never been tracked down. There have never been any hints as to how old they are, where they live, or what their gender is, but they have apparently hinted that they hail from somewhere in Asia. While other YouTubers dream of becoming famous and making a lot of money, I Am Nobody 89757 has stated that he has no interest in fame or riches, and that they're only concerned with making a difference in the world. This hasn't stopped internet sleuths from trying to discover their true identity though, but they have had very little, if any, success, which led to a lot of speculation. It's been suggested that they're working for the government as an agent, and that the username is used as a cover. Some people think that it isn't one individual, but a group of hackers that all operate under the same handle. Then there are those who have suggested that I Am Nobody 89757 is an AI bot that belongs to a clandestine organization, likely due to their cryptic posts and the symbolism in their posts. Whether the user is a real person, multiple people, or an AI program remains to be seen, and at present their identity remains a YouTube mystery. The YouTube channel, All Seeing Advisor, has been described by some people who have viewed its contents as an ARG, while others believe the videos fall into the analog horror genre, meaning that it's an offshoot of found footage and is usually posted to the internet. The channel was created on the 28th of October 2012, the same day that its first video, entitled Don't Look My False World.avi, was uploaded. It begins with a high-pitched sound, after which a man can be heard saying podcast number 16. A man with a beard can then be seen on screen, but he then walks out of the room that he's in, but he returns after static is heard. He then tells someone off camera, that's creepy, isn't it? After which the screen switches to texts that reads, you can't escape, did you think you could hide? Next, we see a drawing of a face with a huge smile and blank eyes. Someone then carries the camera outside, and text flashes across the screen reading, Don't look at me. The person holding the camera walks down the street while talking to someone else who's also off camera, and the same text appears again, along with the face that now has crossed out eyes. They then come across a piece of paper on the ground with the words, Look up, and when the man with the camera turns around, he sees a figure with a mask dressed in black that then comes charging at him, prompting him to run away. The video ends with the words you've been advised appearing on the screen. The second video, spoken word, starts with the word advise flashing on screen before the same creepy face and the words spoken word appear. It also contains other phrases including I'm listening and speak, while strange distorted sounds play in the background. The third video is entitled hide.avi and starts with words we interrupt this program to bring you this important message we are not escapable. We then see the interior of the same house in the first video, along with the phrase, we have found you, before the footage cuts to the outdoors again. The words, you know too much, appear before the same figure in black makes an appearance. 
It chases after the man once more, as the words, you cannot escape. The intruder, we know where you live and sleep, appear on screen. We then see the distorted figure of a person who seems to be looking at the camera while strange sounds play in the background. The last three videos are called Jason, Response, and Woods, respectively. The first of which announces that the game has started with a new player. It's also revealed that the answers that are being sought lie at the end of a road. A few characters are then introduced. It's revealed that the man dressed in black is the intruder, while another figure in a gas mask is known to be Mr. Black. There's also the Null, the Shadow, and the Advisor. We then see text that reads, quote, Having your friend do this was a terrible mistake, and that the team of characters has been given their orders, which are to take Jason away. The last video reveals that Jason's task is to go into the woods where a present will be waiting for him. He's given a hint that reads, It stands the tallest, it stands alone, down the path of noble you will go. It adds that if the envelope is not collected within 24 hours, he'll be forced to do terrible things to those close to him. It's a strange series of videos that may conclude one day, but for now remains an unsolved YouTube mystery. Kenny Veach, known as Snakebit McGee online, was a small-time YouTuber who filmed himself exploring the caves and mysteries of the deserts in Nevada. Kenny told his followers that for the last 20 years, he had dedicated his free time to exploring the landscape and had encountered things that would frighten anyone. Despite scorching temperatures and a lack of equipment, Kenny was one of those lucky YouTuber explorers who barely escaped alive. However, this would all change in 2014, and one comment would ultimately lead to his mysterious disappearance. Kenny had made a few YouTube videos, but what really caught people's eye was one comment underneath a video titled, Son of an Area 51 Technician. This one harmless comment would lead to a years-long mystery and the active and open investigation into a missing YouTuber. In the comment, Kenny wrote, quote, That ain't nothing. I'm a long-distance hiker. One time during one of my hikes out by Nellis Air Force Base, I found a hidden cave. The entrance to the cave was shaped like a perfect capital M. I always enter every cave I find, but as I began to enter this particular cave, my whole body began to vibrate. The closer I got to the cave entrance, the worse the vibrating came. Suddenly, I became very scared and hightailed it out of there. That was one of the strangest things that's ever happened to me. This comment attracted a lot of attention, and commenters were begging Kenny to explore this mysterious MK. So that's exactly what he did. Unfortunately, Kenny was not in the habit of carrying a GPS device, so the exact location of the M cave was unknown. In one video, Kenny took his viewers along as he tried to find the cave once more, but failed to do so. Kenny and his viewers didn't want to give up that easily. And on November 10th, 2014, Kenny Veach set out on his last ever hike. He kissed his girlfriend, Sharon Pilgrim, goodbye and headed towards the Sheep Mountains in Nevada. According to Sharon, Kenny only planned on staying in the desert overnight, and when he failed to return home two days later, she knew something was wrong. Sharon called the Las Vegas Police Department and reported Kenny missing. Within hours, the LVPD headed into the desert and were able to track the signal from Kenny's phone. His phone was later found near an old mine shaft that Kenny had shown in his video chronicling his quest to find the mysterious M cave. Multiple searches of the area were conducted, but ultimately no sign of Kenny was ever found. Following his disappearance, Kenny's YouTube channel grew in popularity, and many still ponder the mystery to this day. Some believe that Kenny discovered something he shouldn't have, and either a government organization or something worse caught up to him. It's also possible that Kenny became injured while in the desert, and was unable to get back to safety. Until more evidence comes to light, or Kenny makes a statement, it appears that his mysterious disappearance will go unsolved and become a part of YouTube lore. Paranormalana, also known as Alana G, was a small-time paranormal YouTuber back in the early 2010s. Her content focused on paranormal stories and ghost stories, with a sprinkling of other true events. During her time on the platform, Elana garnered over 50,000 subscribers 
and had a dedicated fan base who were excited to see what story she would cover next. With her bright and outgoing personality, it's easy to see why people flocked to Alana's channel. But then one day, everything changed. Alana stopped posting and mysteriously disappeared, never to be heard from again. In 2015, Alana premiered her new series, Vampires Over History, and both herself and her fans were excited to see where the series would head. Alana had slowly gained traction, but not all of her fans were adoring. She had recently begun to receive hate and sometimes violent comments. These comments would escalate in the coming months and turn into something very dangerous. On September 3, 2015, without warning, Alana's channel simply disappeared. Her social media accounts had also been deleted and fans were left puzzled. People came together to try to solve the mystery and remembered that a few months ago, Alana had made a shocking post on her social media. In the post, Alana explained that she was being stalked by an unknown individual and was beginning to change how her social media operated. Many began to wonder whether this stalker had harmed Alana or whether the pressure of the incident had forced her to come off the internet once and for all. The timing and rashness of Alana's disappearance chilled her viewers, and since her channel was deleted in 2015, she has never been seen or heard from again. Paranormal Lana is now known as a YouTuber who mysteriously disappeared instead of a warm and friendly paranormal YouTuber who put a lot of effort into her content. In 2006, father and son, Joe and Garrett McCullough, joined YouTube under the channel name of Mac Adventures. The duo set out to record their adventures into the unknown with a specific focus on Area 51. Area 51 is the most hotly debated area in the US and comes with a plethora of conspiracy theories. Hundreds upon thousands of people flocked to the channel to get a glimpse of the duo as they tried to expose the truth of what was happening in the US. Then in 2016, one of their videos went viral, sparking controversy and ending with the disappearance of two famous YouTubers. In October of 2016, the channel uploaded a video showing Joe and Garrett being surrounded by mysterious men in camo outfits as they approached the perimeter of Edwards Air Force Base. This area is restricted access only, and the government and those stationed at the base do not take kindly to intruders. Many believe that Area 51 is hiding secrets of aliens and advanced technologies, hence why the security is so tight and nobody is allowed in. Mac Adventures set out to purposely uncover what's going on in Area 51, but as shown in the last video, they ended up running into trouble. The video carries on with Joe and Garrett being surrounded before eventually escaping with their lives. Joe and Garrett ride off on their bikes and that was the last time anyone ever heard from them. After Joe and Garrett failed to make a follow-up video or social media comment, their fans began freaking out. Their video went viral and wild conspiracy theories began popping up. As the two had been hassled by strange men in camo close to the Edwards Air Force Base, their fans began to believe that the US government or a government agency had captured them because of what they had discovered. Theories flew around for months and many believed that Joe and Garrett were never coming back after they exposed government property and potentially secrets. These rumors and theories continued to swirl for a few years, and the interest in their mysterious disappearance did not seem to dwindle. The paranoia intensified, and their fans were extremely concerned for their well-being. Then, two years later, out of the blue, Joe appeared on a live stream, telling everyone that he and Garrett were alive and well. The YouTube channel Explore With Us decided to dig deeper into the mystery and received screenshots from an Instagram DM with Garrett. Garrett is extremely cryptic in his answers, saying FDC six months, which Explore With Us interpreted as Federal Detention Center. In their video, EWU recorded no record of Joe or Garrett being detained as federal inmates leading many to believe that the father-son duo may have been trolling their audience. Garrett would then leave a cryptic comment on the EWU Instagram post saying, quote, This is the reason why I didn't respond to you. I knew you were fake news looking for views. YouTube page doesn't actually care, nor could you handle the truth. 
While this is technically a solved case, as both Joe and Garrett are alive and well, there is still an element of mystery. Why did the two abandon their channel? And what are they referencing with Nor Could You Handle the Truth? Dasha was the brainchild behind Spy Kitten TV, a YouTube channel that delved deep into conspiracy theories within our world. Dasha primarily focused on theories around the Illuminati, leading her to garner a wide audience from around the world who were interested in diving deeper into this bizarre and mysterious supposed organization. By 2018, she had amassed over 273,000 subscribers and was active on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon. It appeared that all was going well for Dasha. She was gaining momentum with her content, and her fans were interested and captivated by it. Then, in July and August of 2018, the popular conspiracy YouTuber simply disappeared. She stopped posting videos and all of her social media fell silent. Her last Instagram post was made on August 12th, 2018, and she's never been seen or heard from since. As Dasha was silent, her fans flocked to her Instagram account and began commenting, asking for any sign that she was alive and well. Soon, theories began to spread that Dasha had been kidnapped or arrested because of the information she was exposing. Many in the conspiracy community hold this collective fear of being taken by the government for the information that they are exposing, and Dasha was not immune to these fears. One comment theorized that Dasha changed her name and moved to a new channel called The Witching Hour. The channel posted its last video two years ago, and it's not been confirmed whether this belongs to Dasha or not. Unfortunately, there's a lack of solid evidence in Dasha's case, and it continues to remain mysterious and unsolved. 28-year-old Nicholas Sonderegger of Salton Sea Beach, California, will always be remembered by his family as happy, outgoing, and adventurous. His family created a website to memorialize him, and all of the photographs display Nicholas's outgoing and adventure-loving spirit. In 2018, Nicholas was a small YouTuber with around 2,000 subscribers, a number that has been given a boost thanks to a larger channel. Nicholas was excited about the direction of his life and the channel and looked forward to where YouTube could take him. Unfortunately, Nicholas would never get to witness the progress of his channel. Nicholas disappeared in what the Imperial County Sheriff's Office has called one of the most mysterious disappearances in their history. And to this day, he remains a missing person. According to the website nicksonderegger.com and the Imperial County Sheriff's Office, Nick was last seen at around 2.30 a.m. on July 9, 2018. At around 2.30, Nick and his friend Austin were at Nick's home in Salton Sea Beach when they heard a woman screaming outside. The pair rushed to the front door and out into their garden, trying to track the source of the sound. The two debated whether they should investigate and possibly intervene. From here, the details are murky, and it appears that Austin went to bed, leaving Nick alone. When Austin awoke the next morning, he found that Nick was missing and immediately began searching for his friend. After searching the surrounding area and finding no sign of Nick, Austin contacted the Imperial County Sheriff's Office and reported Nick missing. The Imperial County Sheriff's Office searched the same area that Austin had searched, but this time they discovered a boot, a pair of pants, and a weapon sleeve that belonged to Nick. No other signs of Nick were found, and the Imperial County Sheriff's Office was left baffled. Nobody has ever come forward with any information, and Nick's keys and wallet still remain unaccounted for. The channel that featured Nick later made a video about his disappearance, and even with this attention, there have been few leads and clues in his case. Nick's family are desperately seeking answers, and there's a $10,000 reward for information that leads to Nick. Nicholas Sonderager is described as a white male with brown hair, brown eyes, 5'10", and 185 pounds. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Imperial County Sheriff's Office at 442-265-2021. The YouTube mystery involving the disappearance of YouTuber Shima Luan began on the 13th of October, 2016, when she was last seen playing Minecraft. 
Shima was one of several hosts for the animated YouTube channel Danger Dolan, which was later renamed Planet Dolan. The channel was an informative and educational one, with Shima pointing out true facts while another character, Dolan, pointed out false ones. She acquired many fans, with many people regarding her as the show's best host. Then in 2016, the channel uploaded an episode called The Future of Planet Dolan, in which it was revealed that Shima had grown distant from the rest of the channel's crew. At the time, they believed her to be okay, since she was when they last saw her, but many theories have sprung up due to her sudden departure. There are those who believe that the crew is covering up her disappearance, though this is highly unlikely. Others believe that she merely decided to follow a different life path due to having problems with her mental health, though this has also not been confirmed. For four years, there were no further updates, and in 2020, YouTuber Scare Theater created a video in which he analyzed Shima's disappearance. In the comments section, Hellbent, a member of the Planet Dolan crew, added the following comment, saying, quote, it's sort of an unsolvable mystery to those who don't know her, because to solve it in a satisfying way publicly, we'd have to invade the actress who played Shima's personal life on a public level. Truth is, we always had trouble getting folks to separate the cartoons from the actors. On the 23rd of December, Shima's profile picture was changed from her usual avatar of a pink cat to a black and white image of crushed leaves. Some fans assumed that this was a sign that she would be returning, while others thought that her account had been hacked or that it was a sign from her that she was doing fine. No definitive answers have been found, and her current whereabouts remain unknown. The Deeper YouTube channel has been the subject of a strange internet mystery since its first upload on the 19th of May, 2016. And it may have remained just another strange YouTube channel if it weren't for the fact that a series of hexadecimals were posted to 4chan, resulting in the channel's discovery after the codes revealed a series of URLs. The channel's content consists entirely of bizarre and unsettling videos, some of which are presented in a similar style to that of VHS tapes. They're usually accompanied by distorted or disjointed audio and feature titles like Around, Listen, Drop, and Mortem. After further investigation was done by internet users, some of the videos and their descriptions were found to have codes hidden in them, either in the hexadecimal or Caesar cipher style. But it only got stranger once the codes were decoded. Each of the codes was found to spell out the name of a real-life murder victim, or someone who mysteriously disappeared, all but one of which were between 5 foot and 5 foot 8 inches tall weighing between 105 and 130 pounds with reddish-brown hair. All of the cases found in the codes occurred in Colorado, resulting in at least one Reddit user reporting the channel to the FBI. All of these factors combined have resulted in many theories on what the exact purpose of the channel may be. Some people believe that the channel's creator is in fact a serial killer who is taunting the police with their uploads and that he is targeting women in the Colorado area, making it likely that they also live in that area or nearby. Others believe it to merely be a clever ARG, with the uploader leaving clues to be solved, like a puzzle. Though some commenters have found the subject matter to be somewhat distasteful, since it involves actual missing people or victims who have lost their lives. Another theory that has been suggested is that the uploader is a copycat killer, who is paying tribute to a serial killer. However, it's believed that the creator of the channel passed away on the 14th of August 2020, very likely taking the secrets of the strange channel with them. Talika Patrick was a first-year resident at Western Michigan University's medical school, but in her spare time, she had a YouTube channel containing videos of herself singing, as she was also a fan of gospel singer Marvin Sapp. But then, on the 5th of December 2013, she mysteriously disappeared. She was last seen as she left the parking lot of the Borges Medical Center where she worked with mentally ill patients. When she didn't show up for work the following day, a co-worker filed a missing person report. Talika's car, a 1997 Lexus ES300, 
was found in a ditch with a flat tire along Interstate 94 in northwestern Indiana. But Talika was nowhere to be found. It would later come to light that motorists on the interstate had contacted authorities about the car, which was seen being driven erratically and at high speeds. At first, it was believed that she was traveling to Chicago, as she had mentioned to friends that she was thinking of taking a trip there. But it would later be found that she was headed to St. Louis to visit a friend. Her mother told investigators that Talika had decided to move to Kalamazoo because she had a fiancé and she wanted to be close to them, though it was unclear who she was referring to. It's thought that she may have been talking about Marvin Sapp, as he accused her of stalking and filed a protection order against her. She had joined his church and contacted members of his family, telling them that she was his wife. It's also thought that the songs she sang on her YouTube channel were aimed at Sap as they often refer to an unknown love interest. Her ex-husband also added that just before they met, Talika had been hearing voices and believed it to be God who was talking to her. She refused treatment, and on the 9th of April, 2014, Talika was found deceased in Lake Charles in Indiana, and her death was ruled an accidental drowning. But many questions still remain. The day before her disappearance, she tweeted that she was being hounded by a demonic power and that she couldn't take it much longer. Soon after, she deleted all of her social media accounts. She was also seen trying to check into a hotel in Kalamazoo, despite living in the area. After her last shift, she left her cell phone and other personal belongings in her locker and asked a coworker for a ride downtown, despite her car being in the parking lot. Both the coworker and the hotel clerk described her as acting strangely. She then asked to be taken back to Borges to collect her wallet, which she later claimed to have lost. Despite all these facts, it's not known how Talika ended up in the lake, and it's likely to remain a strange but true unsolved mystery forever. A short but unsettling YouTube video that was filmed in the Paris catacombs is considered one of the best-known YouTube mysteries of all time, and its creator still remains unknown today. In the video, a man is walking through the catacombs while filming everything he sees. At first, he seems calm, and he takes close-up shots of some of the bones that are located in the vast tunnel system. But that soon changes. At some point, the man seems to panic, possibly because he has become lost, he frantically starts to look for a way out, becoming more panicked as time passes. Before long, he's running and can be heard breathing heavily before he drops the camera. His feet can be seen running past the camera and out of the frame, and the camera remains where it was dropped, filming until it runs out of battery power. When the footage was analyzed, it was discovered that the man was actually running deeper into the catacombs rather than towards an exit. The camera was later found in one of the deepest areas of the catacombs by a group of recreational explorers, and the footage was eventually uploaded to YouTube. Many people question why the man dropped the camera, his only source of light in the pitch darkness, with some suggesting that he would have only done so due to being utterly terrified. Some people believe that the footage is fake, but the general consensus is that it seems to be real. Either way, it makes for some distressing viewing, and it's easy to see why this weird mystery is still being talked about. Many attempts have been made to find the man, but none have been successful. Any attempts to identify him have proved fruitless, and we may never know if he made it out alive, or perished while trying to find his way out. On the 23rd of August, 2007, a YouTube channel called Guy Terry uploaded a 51-second video that left many viewers feeling disconcerted and terrified. The video starts in what seems to be an apartment, and a man can be heard asking someone in the room, did you hear that? The room seems to be dark, with the only source of light coming from the camera and an adjacent kitchen. The person holding the camera then walks to the front door of the apartment and turns the knob. As the door opens, a dark hallway can be seen, and the man aims the camera out the door into the hallway. As he steps around the doorway, he's met with a truly unsettling sight. At the far end of the corridor, a woman can be seen sitting against the wall, 
seemingly holding her knees in her arms. The man tries to focus on the figure until it seems to move and quickly retreats back into the apartment. He can be heard whispering right outside the door. The camera pans around the room for a few seconds before he decides to take another look outside the door. He opens the door while whispering another inaudible sentence. And this time, he's met by an even more terrifying sight. The woman has stood up from the floor and is now facing him head on. She's standing in the middle of the corridor with her arms held in a threatening position next to her sides, as if ready to attack at any moment. It isn't possible to see her face or any other features, but her demeanor seems to indicate that she's about to launch at him. The man gets frightened and gasps and retreats back into the apartment again, slamming the door shut as he does so, and this is where the video ends. Not much else is known about the video, except that the channel hasn't uploaded any content in the last eight years, and seems to focus heavily on videos from the popular game Grand Theft Auto despite many of the earlier videos seeming to show alleged hauntings. The video has gained 800,000 views and has caused much speculation, with many people guessing that it was merely created as a hoax. Others aren't so sure, however, and believe that it shows an actual ghost. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But my name is Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.